Ahab, I'll get them for you. And Ahab now conquers and rules over the people because of their own iniquity that God cut off. See, it works, doesn't it? Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 11. Here's what God said, don't do. You don't follow after a charmer. Uh, think, of, uh, think of charmed. We're going to get to that in a minute. A charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard. Or a necromancer. You know what a necromancer is? Okay. One that has contact with the dead. What are vampires? They're dead. Verse 12. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. See, that doesn't sound like amazing grace, how sweet the sound, does it? All these that are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. God said the land that you're going into is full of uh, charmers and wizards and familiar spirits and necromancers. And God said, I'm going to kick them out and I'm going to put them in your place. So don't, uh, don't do what they did or I'll kick you out too. That's what God said. So you have to understand and realize that the studies based upon things that are of the occult world those studies and those ideas and those principles being brought into vacation Bible schools and Sunday school rooms and Bible studies and even coming out of the pulpits, coming out of so-called Christian musicians who put on their website, yeah, my favorite book, man, was like Charmed. My favorite book was uh, Twilight. My favorite movie was Lord of the Rings. They're bringing that into the church. And God said, you know what? If you follow after that stuff, I can't help you. And Jezebel is moving in, and she is causing people. No one, listen, no one is being forced to worship the dragon. No one is. They're making a choice, and Jezebel is the agent of that choice. That verse mentions that you're not supposed to follow Charmers. TV show called Charmed. It has three witches in it, and their symbol is the... Uh, Triketra, that's a magic symbol. It's not a Christian symbol. God said there's not... Oh, yeah, it's like uh, the symbol for... Uh, let's see if I have my uh, New King James Version. No, it's, it's over there. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the, they say it's a symbol of the Trinity. But God said in the book of Acts that we're not to think that the Godhead uh, can be graven with art and man's device. God said, there, <laughs> no, there's, there, God, is there a symbol for the Trinity? God said, no. The book publisher said, oh yeah, it's a symbol for the Trinity, but it's not. It's witchcraft. And that spirit, there you see the New King James Version of the Bible. Same, same symbol, by the way. Same symbol. I mean, I mean you, wouldn't, you wouldn't actually pick up a Bible, would you? Maybe, maybe you would. We're getting into this. Maybe you wouldn't pick up a Bible that had like a big giant pentagram with candles and a goat head on it. Would you? And yet... Religious leaders, big money people on TV ministries hold up their New King James Version of the Bible with the tri catch with a witchcraft symbol on it, the charmed symbol. They're leading you not toward Christ. They're leading you to Ahab, who wants that vineyard, and Jezebel is helping him get there. So, I mean, that's, that's just like the basics here. So, when, when we look at churches that are doing Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Charmed, Twilight, you name it, when they're having theme parties based upon this stuff, when we, we see that and we go, you know, I, that, that's not right. That's easy. That's the easy part right there. Or it should be. Anybody with a brain should look at that and say, you know what, we're, I, no, we can, Pastor, we can't do that. That's, that's not right. It's not, you know, it's a shame. It's the pastors who are not just standing back and allowing it to happen. They're the ones promoting it. What does that say about the pastors? What does that say about them? Let's, let's, do, let's change here, okay? Because we know that uh, witchcraft is part of the occult, so we sh should stay away from the movies, the books, the hint, all that stuff. Stay away from things that are occult. Keep it out of your church, okay? Keep it out of your home. Keep it out of your family. Just keep it out, okay? The next thing we get into... Uh, let me, let me read a verse, okay, out of, my, out of my Bible. I love my Bible. This actually, uh, this old Bible that I have, and I have a piece of scotch tape holding this page together here because it's precious to me. I don't want to lose especially this part of my Bible. This is Ephesians chapter 2, 
verse 8. Let me tell you the real gospel, and there's only one, 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 one way to the Lord Jesus Christ, only one. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works. Now, I want you to repeat these words after me. That's not a ritual we're doing. I just want to get it, get it in your head. Not of works. Got it? Why? Lest any man should boast. God knows the wicked nature of man in that if he, if he, ha if he actually had a system where people could perform things in front of people and people go, ooh, ah, wow, look at that. Wow, they're holy because they're doing that. You see, if God actually had a system that employed the use of works, actions, rituals for people to be saved, then God knows the wicked nature of man. Man would go, yes, we are the holy men of God because look at what we're doing. See, God doesn't let any... He, he specifically designed salvation to be based upon His grace and not by your doings. Not by, as Paul said in Galatians, not by your ritual of circumcision. Not by keeping the law because... You haven't, and you never have, you are not now, and you never will keep the law. Not by your rituals either. So what is it that we know about witches and what they do? Witches do rituals. And so when, when I see, now when I see rituals inside of a house that they call a church, and by these rituals, they're saying, no, we must perform these rituals. We must do this. Everybody do this and stand here and I'll hold my hands like this. And we'll do all, we'll do all the stuff. And when we do this stuff, then God will come down and he will give us blessing. When I see that, it makes me, it makes me sad, but it makes me angry. Because they're saying that if we, I, yeah, I, Jesus saves. See, we're saying it. But really, unless you do this... You cannot be set. You cannot go to heaven unless you perform what we tell you to perform. That is most obvious in the Roman Catholic Church. The, the Roman Catholic Church is all about rituals. No priest, no Roman Catholic priest has ever told anybody that they're saved without performing a ritual of some kind. The sacraments, the seven sacraments, all the sacraments of the Mass, the sacraments of confession, the sacraments of penance, the sacraments of holy marriage, the sacraments of the holy orders, like becoming a priest or a monk or a nun. They say that you, can't, you cannot ever, 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 ever go to heaven without having water splashed on your face, without eating the cookie, without drinking the cup, which, by the way, here, here, here we're going to get into it, okay? Roman Catholic ritual states that the priest, once he performs, he, 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 has, this, he has this little cookie in a box. It's called, a, called a, a monstrance or whatever. You know, you see him hold the monstrance, a big sun image with the cookie in it, the wafer. What, he takes the wafer, and once he says, he's, listen to this now, think about witchcraft. Once he says the right words, and see, these priests, they actually have a book with all these words written in it that they have to recite. Priests just can't make it up as they go. They recite the words. And when they recite the words and perform the ritual, then the wafer turns into God. It's called the doctrine of transubstantiation. They teach this right here. If you ever watch a Roman Catholic priest, once they turn that cookie into God, they're like, Oh, we got to be careful. We can't even we can't get crumbs on the floor. You watch them. That's what they're doing. They've performed a magic spell using incantations and ritual performances that has turned this wafer, this piece of dough into God. And they say, "Now, whoever who anybody here want to be saved, you want to go to heaven, you have to eat this." And if you don't eat it, you're not going to heaven. Um, it's idolatry. I'm going to read you a verse. I'm going to read you a verse. Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. Paul here again says the word witchcraft. And he says idolatry right next to it. You see, I want you to look at this picture here. 
Okay, you know what idolatry is? It's bowing down to a thing, something. Okay, um, I was reading a little bit of history today, and I was reading about uh, I think who was it? Cortez. When in chapter three, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree." that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was four hundred and thirty years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the Scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster, to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise.' 